Okay, we're going to do a quick digital painting demonstration. We have Adobe Photoshop open. We've already opened the file that we're going to be working with for the picture here. And the first thing that I'm going to want you to do is to make a copy of your background. So you can do that by hitting Control J or Command J if you're using a Mac and that'll just make an exact copy of your background. You never want to <clears throat> change your background layer. Um, you don't want to change the original file. Um, you can also start off by saving this as a separate file, which can be good. We're going to call it And I saved it as a .psd, which is a Photoshop file. I might save a copy of it later in a different format. Okay, so now we have a background or backup copy here. Now there's several ways to do this. <clears throat> I'm going to go through just a couple of techniques. I can zoom in and out by hitting Command Plus or Control Plus, Control Minus. And I'll show you some of the other tools that we're going to be using. <clears throat> we'll use the paintbrush tool, which is on the left here. But we'll also use the magic wand tool some. Okay. And let's go to the magic wand tool real quick. That allows me to grab an entire area, anything that's connected. Um, so if I click on that and zoom in, you can kind of see the dotted lines going around. Anywhere that's selected would get painted. Anywhere that's not selected would not get painted. So I'll just demonstrate that real quick. I'm going to erase this anyway. I've got my color selected. I've got my paintbrush selected. I made that bigger using the bracket, smaller using the bracket. There's other ways to do it. You can change it with the slider here. But as you can see, I've selected around the outside of the shapes there. Since this is a really cartoony drawing, it helps that the edges are all really sharp. You can pick up on that super easy. You can see how quickly I was able to paint in that background. Okay. Um, to step backwards, you can hit Control Z and Control Option Z to go back several steps. Okay. I'm going to go back to my magic wand tool again. And I'm going to select the outside again. And that let me last time paint everywhere on the outside. But if I hit right click, or if I'm using a laptop, I do the two finger click, then I can actually select the inverse part. I mean, now instead of selecting the outside part where I clicked, it's going to select everything except that. Okay. So I'm actually going to now create a, a separate layer down here at the bottom. Create new layer. And this layer is on top of that old layer. That means that layer underneath won't get affected by what I do. Okay. So I'm going to use the same color as before. I'm going to hit the letter B. That's my hot key or my fast way of just doing the same thing as clicking the paintbrush over here. But now you can see that I've selected the other part of it the inside part instead of the outside part. Oh no, but I've covered up all of my all of my shapes. I lost all the detail. Well, there are ways to change this one. I can take that eyeball off. It's on a separate layer, so I actually did never touch this regular drawing, which is great. That's a good way to work. Um, so I did it on a separate layer entirely. Now this layer is acting like a regular layer, just totally opaque when I put paint down. But you can put different filters on it to make it behave a little bit differently. See, I select dark in there, and that means that it lets the darker colors show through. Okay. So that's a very, very rapid way to put color in and not lose detail. Multiply. 
all of these filters kind of have a slightly different um, style to them and a lot of times it's best to just figure out what it is that you are going for and kind of experiment with it because they all do different things that's pretty nice I like that But I wanted to do something <clears throat> different with my style than this. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just trash that layer that we were working on. And I'm going to create a new one. And this is going to be the layer that I'm working on. We're going to call this um, our ground layer. So we're going to call this our ground layer. And the next layer we're going to call color and after that I'm actually gonna make another layer I'm going to copy the ground layer control J and I'm gonna put this layer actually on top so if it's up here on the layers spectrum that means that's the closest layer to you then the one behind the one behind the one behind now it might seem kind of silly that I have like three copies of the same image here, but I want the base to still be there as a backup. And this layer on top, I'm actually going to make kind of see-through. I'm going to make this layer a darken layer. And on the layer underneath, this is where I'm going to do my painting. Okay. And what that's going to do is keep that picture up on top, but allow me to color underneath. Now, normally I can just take a paintbrush and paint in there. You can see it's not going to make the picture disappear or anything like that. But I only want to select certain parts to paint. So again, i got to use my wand tool. If I just click somewhere on, on this layer, since there's nothing in that layer, it's empty, it's going to select the whole thing. I don't want that. So I'm going to go to a layer that is has picture in it. I'm going to select what I want. Now that selected all that empty space, but I actually want to paint the other part, so I have to inverse it. I'll do my right click. I'm going to select the inverse. But I don't want to paint on this layer. I want to paint on the layer underneath. Okay. So now it should only paint inside my characters, but it will still have the picture over the top of it. <clears throat> I'm going to choose the color I want. Somewhere in there. I'm going to hit the B button for brush. Oh, that's far too large. And I'll probably just work with a regular brush for now, but you can change the type of brush that you use. Okay, All sorts of different brushes with different textures. Now I'll demonstrate just a little bit right here. See how it's not coloring outside? my figure is only getting in the areas that I've selected which is great that's what I want it will however catch anything inside that shape I don't want that. I'm going to change the size using the brackets. I'm going to zoom in. Do some detail work here.
So I'm being a little bit careful, but less careful than I would need to be if I was worried about going off the side of the edge there. See anything outside that, it's not going to paint. Only inside the selected area. But see, like the eyeball is inside the selected area, so if I didn't want that painted, I'd have got to be more careful. I'm going to erase that. I'm just using the erase tool with the letter E. Okay. Switch back to my brush. Okay. Great. Um, a lot of times if I'm painting, um, I try to use the same color several times in my piece. I want to show you something real quick. Can turn that color on and off to see. If I turn off this overcoat, boy, that looks a little bit silly, doesn't it? You can kind of see my brush strokes, and they don't line up perfect, and that's okay because this layer on top with the darken mode on it preserves the original line drawing picture for me. I'm going to make sure I'm back on this layer. This is the layer where I want to do all my color. Okay. Now, why isn't it painting inside this section? It's because down there you can see that it's not connected. So when it did the select, it selected all the way in this area. I'll have to go back and fix that later. Draw a little line across and then select just that area to paint in. not so bad. I'm going to swap colors, I think. Yeah, we're going to swap to a red now. Um, I have some color swatches already up here, or you can just select your color by clicking on it. And it should save you the recent colors up near the top. I'll show you another cool trick in just a minute with color selection. Of course, if I make my brush bigger, I did that with the big bracket, and I can cover more space more quickly. I just can't have quite as much detail control. Okay. There's that. So again, just that layer by itself kind of looks like that. Wow, it looks like a mess without that masking layer on top. All right. Now, if I want to switch colors, I can just hit X, and that'll switch between the two colors right here. But if I need this color again, and I don't, I don't want to go back through here and try to find that again. There's a much faster way. If you hit I. You see that little eyedropper, and then you click on a color, it'll automatically select that color for you. And then you can go back to using that color again if you pull up your paintbrush. Okay.
So really this process is a lot faster than trying to do it with traditional drawing or painting tools. It's also a lot easier to undo mistakes. Just use my erase tool there real quick. And that was with the letter E and back to my brush. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit more detail. Now I'm going to do some highlights. I want to select a color that's close to this green one that I'm using, but I want to highlight for it. So on here, I'm going to go a little bit lighter. I think I'll make my light highlights a little bit closer to the yellow on the spectrum. And I'm going to change my brush type. I'm going to use a brush that has kind of a softer edge on it. Let's see what this does. It's not quite as bright as I wanted it. I like it, but it's not quite as bright as I wanted it. Let's try that. That's going to give me kind of an airbrush look on it. So I'm using a soft brush. I need to step backwards, I just hit Control Z or Control Option Z if I need to go more than one step backwards. I'm going to do a reflected light on my other side here. And for my reflected light, I'm going to start off with a similar color again. I'm going to go more towards the blue on it. It might go slightly, slightly darker. Here's my regular color that I was just on and the one that I'm changing to. And I'm going to keep with that soft brush and just see what happens here. Do I like it? No, I don't love that. Maybe if I make the brush smaller. Yeah, okay. Gives a very airbrushed effect, which I think I like. And I want to switch back to that red again. How do I do that? I and then B go back to my brush. I'm still on that really soft brush, though. I'm gonna change that.
and I will just follow kind of that same pattern, filling things in. Make sure to have this top layer in darken mode. Color is all on its own layer, and then I have two layers underneath just as a backup. In case everything goes wrong, I can erase those. This checkerboard pattern means that that's an empty space. It means it's see-through, um, which you might want depending on what surface you're printing onto. Um, you follow the same process. I'll show you one that I was working on before. Same technique. Just a little more time invested into it. I've used several different brushes. Take off those extra layers. And the background's just like this. I did several layers on this one so that I could keep my colors separated. But the idea is the same. I used a, a harder brush on this rather than rather than like a, a soft edged brush, so it's less of a airbrush feel. When you want to save, you should think about how you want to save. If you save as a Photoshop, as a .psd, we call it, see the end here, .psd, then it will save all of your layers with it. If you save it, and this is a very large file size, but if you saved it as a PSD and you emailed it to yourself or went to a different computer and that other computer has Photoshop on it, then you can pick this up right where it was with all the layers and keep working on it. If you just need to save the picture, you could save it as a JPEG. That's like regular picture format. Uh, a JPEG does have a little bit of a loss. They use a compression algorithm, which means that you lose a little bit of the fidelity of the image. Um, it's not a big deal for one image, but if you were to copy it again and again and again and again and again, the quality would get worse and worse. You can save it as a PNG file, which will preserve invisible layers for you, invisible textures, and or you can save it as a TIFF, which shouldn't have compression. Um, so JPEG, PNG, or TIFF. Are good ways to save. Those are smaller file sizes. No image compression on this TIFF. Yes, it'll be slightly larger because of that. That'll save it as a picture for you without the layers. So the next time you open it, it'll just be the picture. If you want to get rid of a selected area, command or control D will stop that selection for you. And those marching ants will stop and then you can see that it's just drawing over the top regular. Okay, that's a little intro to digital painting. Um, I recommend starting with a black and white photo and just coloring it in and practicing with that first.